Hi, I'm Kat, and in this video I show you how to arm knit a large throw blanket just like this one. It's a really big wide open stitch because you're basically knitting using your arms instead of knitting needles. So I love the way this turned out. I think it's really pretty and this one actually turned out roughly the same size as a standard full or queen size duvet cover. For this project you just need your arms and your yarn. I am using three lengths of yarn to knit with continuously. So basically I found, and these look very similar, but these are two different lengths of very similar large gauge gray yarn. And then this is a smaller gauge white yarn with a nice texture that I like. So I'm going to end up using probably one and a half balls of the smaller gauge yarn and three balls each of the larger gauge yarns. Start at the ends of your yarn and measure out roughly 25 feet. But if your arms are wider or thinner, you might want to compensate for the length because you might need more or less. Once you've measured out that 25 feet, that will be the tail that you're going to cast on with. Next, grab your yarn, make a loop, twist the loop over, and take whichever section of yarn is on top, in this case this one, put it underneath and up through the loop. That makes your slip knot. I'll show you one more time. Make a loop, twist it over, this section is on top so I'm going to put it underneath and up through the loop, making a slip knot. I want that slip knot to be big enough to fit over the wide part of my arm. So this section that I already measured out is the tail and then this other section that leads off this way is called the working yarn and this is still attached to my skeins or balls of yarn. So I'm just going to set those on the floor and I'm going to unwind a little bit so that I have some space to work with and a little bit of slack. Take the working end of your yarn, wrap it around your thumb, and then grab the end that leads into the yarn balls with your ring finger and pinky, and just hold it like that. Then take the tail and hold it just looped around your first finger and kind of pinched in place between your first finger and your middle finger. Then you're going to take the hand that has the loop around it, make like you're going to slap someone, and then scoop up the length of yarn that is between your thumb and the section where you're holding it down with your pinky and your ring finger. Scoop that up with the back of your hand, and then scoop up this section over here that is leading to your pointer finger and pull it. You're making a new loop and you're going to slide that onto this arm now and make sure again that that loop is big enough to fit on the wide part of your arm. So again, and then you'll slide those down to work with them. Again, you're holding all of your yarn like this. You don't have to hold onto it if you don't want to, but I think it's easier for most people if they can kind of pinch it with their ring finger and pinky. Grab the yarn with the back of this hand. Then grab this section over here that's leading to your pointer finger and scoop it up with the front of your hand. And usually if you're forming that loop around the wide part of your hand, it's going to fit on the upper part of your arm. So just don't pull anything too tight as you work. I'll do this a little bit faster. So you can see how it looks when I do it. just like that. And as you work, these are going to tighten up a little bit. So you want to make sure that you slide it up your arm occasionally to widen out those links because you don't want them to get too narrow and you want to make sure that you have a consistent loop size throughout your entire throw. Your slip knot is going to count as your first stitch and now you're going to make a total of 34 stitches. Once you've made all of the stitches on your arm, completely filled up your arm like I have, you're ready to move on to the next row. And you can also do more or fewer stitches depending on how much length that you end up with. I still have a little bit extra of the tail left over, but I like nice rounded numbers so I'm going to leave it with the number that I already made. So next, to continue with the next row, you're going to ignore the tail, just toss that aside, grab your working yarn in the hand that you have all of the loops on, 
Hold it tight in that hand, pull a loop off, and then you have made a new loop with the working yarn. Slip that over the wrist of your other hand and that size of the loop that you made there also has to fit over the widest part of your hand up here. Do the same thing again. Hold it in the arm with all the loops, pull it over, stick your other arm through the new loop, and just keep going until you reach the end. When you've gotten to the end of that row and you're ready to start the next one, you are going to do the exact same thing. Grab it in that hand, make a new loop, and put your arm through the new loop. And in case you were wondering, there's going to be one end of the loop that's connected to your work and another end that is connected to your working yarn. The side that is connected to your working yarn faces away from your body. Some people do it differently. It really doesn't matter too much so long as you do it the same way every time. When you start to run out of yarn, grab the end of your yarn and the beginning of the new ball of yarn and simply tie them together. Pull them really, really tight. And then trim off the excess. And just continue knitting the same way you were before. Once you have knitted your entire throw, you will need to bind it off. And to do this, start another row the same way you would any other row, but only do two stitches. Once you've done the second stitch, hold on to that loop and take the first stitch and go over it. Put that loop back on your wrist, take another stitch from the other arm, make a new loop, Put that over your wrist and then pull the loop that was further up your arm over that one. You're basically just going to keep doing this. Start it the way you would any other normal stitch, but then pull the stitch further up your arm over that, leaving only one around your wrist. And when you're completely done with that, before you take off the very last loop, hold it in your hand Put the last bit of yarn that you have through that loop, pull it all the way through, tighten that up a little bit, and then weave that through one more time. And tie it off in a knot. When you know you have the knot good and tight, trim the excess. And that is what the finished throw looks like.